and let us all that we can to build a better future. Over the weekend, AOC was confronted in Texas. Now, there's a big event that's uh, taking place in Texas where there's a Democrat progressive challenger uh, going up against the incumbent. However, uh, during this meet and greet, AOC was confronted about her vote that she did last year in which she gave a present vote towards the Iron Dome funding. Let's play this video in its full entire time. About that a little bit too, because you refuse to fight tooth and nail against the Iron Dome funding. You refuse to stand. Let's talk about it. You're a traitor. Go away. To the let's of talk America about it. The people of the world. Shut up. Let's talk about it. Because let's let's Shocking. actually start on that though, right? Because yeah, I don't believe in elephants in the room. Yeah, let's speak on it because we are all here in solidarity to fight for human rights for Palestinians and Palestinian kids. So if we care about this, my brother, if we care about it, we gotta be about it. Yeah. We gotta be about it. And when the votes happen, and when the votes happen, they have to. Just pause right here. So in order to wind it, I want to play it again one more time. But I think it's very important that every politician gets called out for their vote or when they do screw up or when they fail to follow through with their promises. Now, AOC, being one of the heavyweights in the progressive movement in the Democratic Party, she one time... Again, when Tulsi Gabbard was still a representative for the state of Hawaii, constantly was pointing her finger at her saying, how dare you vote present? How dare you state state present uh, during the Trump impeachment situation? Now, during that infamous showdown between AOC and Nancy Pelosi, where Nancy Pelosi was berating and yelling at her, AOC changed her no vote to a present. And for a lot of progressives, I mean, this is like a huge slap in the face because if we all rewind back the clocks, especially in 2018, AOC ran a campaign to stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people and bring to the address of the apartheid situation that's happening in Israel. But since then, AOC has wavered. Let's play that video again one more time for our viewers. About that a little bit too, because you refuse to fight tooth and nail against the Iron Dome funding. You refuse to stand. Let's talk about it. You're a traitor. Let's talk about it. The people of the world. Let's talk about it. Because let's let's Shocking. actually start on that though, right? Because I don't believe in elephants in the room. Let's speak on it because we are all here in solidarity to fight for human rights for Palestinians and Palestinian kids. So if we care about this, my brother, if we care about it, we gotta be about it. Yeah, we gotta be about it. And when the votes happen, and when the votes happen, they have to talk about that a little bit too. Pause here because it will be repeating itself. So I like how AOC kind of flip-flopped and dodged the question or refused to acknowledge what she did. And that was, she voted present. She changed her no vote to a present. And when being called out on it, she says, we all have to be better. AOC, that opportunity is right there before you. Now, why is AOC in Texas? Well, I think it's very important to bring this up. This is an article from Common Dreams. A better Texas is possible. Uh, Representative AOC uh, rallies for, uh, again, Cis, uh, Cisneros. Uh, she is actually a candidate that's right now, uh, Jessica Cisneros is challenging Democratic incumbent Representative Henry Siller in the dist in District 28 and Greg Caesar uh, running for an open seat in the state's newly created District 35. Both districts stretch from Austin to areas in and around San, Anto uh, San Antonio. U.S. Senator Ted Cruz, a Republican, could never, tweeted AOC on Sunday afternoon as she shared a video of herself dancing with constituents following an afternoon rally with Cesar uh, in San, Ant San Antonio. So at the rally uh, on Saturday, uh, Representative AOC bolstered both candidates by saying that Texas deserves more members in Congress willing to fight for working people and families over corporate interests. And I want to pause it here. And this is a big question I want to ask a lot of these Democratic candidates running um, in this election cycle. When will be the breaking point in which you start falling in line with the establishment, following the party leadership? Because throughout all of 2021, the Democrats 
and the Biden-Harris administration had numerous opportunities to do the right thing, to implement real change. But since that year, what did we see throughout all of 2021? The Biden-Harris administration still implementing a lot of Trump's foreign and domestic Believe. policy, yeah. Obama especially south of the border. The kids are still in cages. That crisis area is still happening. And they're still implementing Trump's policies. We also look at the House progressives and even the Senate progressives and the Democratic Party. When it came down time to challenge the leadership or ease of that, use their own political power against the Biden-Harris administration, they've done nothing except give praises. Nothing for Medicare for all, nothing for UBI, nothing at all. We've gotten nothing throughout all the 2020 election cycle. They were promised, there were promises that were made that were never followed through with because let's face it, that's what the Democrats are good at. So this whole idea of turning a state maybe red to purple or blue, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we have a corrupt system and people who lack the will and heart to challenge the system. We are in this neoliberal nightmare where Americans are still struggling day in, day out. Now look, in theory, maybe if we rewind back the clocks, I would have liked to have seen more progressives in the House and Senate. But the whole idea of reforming the Democratic Party at this point seems to be a fool's errand. Nothing has changed. The ruckus that we were promised never came. The one thing right now that the Democrats should hope for is that maybe enough people are still suffering from Trump derangement syndrome, that enough people could possibly turn out. Now, it's been proven that midterms usually have a low voter turnout. Perhaps maybe this election cycle will be different. But no matter what happens, whether the Democrats keep their majority or have a slim majority or the House is divided or the Republicans take over, nothing will fundamentally change. This whole idea of assuming that things will be better and that there will be a lack of accountability because now the correct people are in office, that's a fool's dream. We have to push forward and we have to build initiatives and movements outside of the influence of Washington, D.C. It's up to us, the people to lead. We cannot hope for these politicians to do well. They are people too, and they fail, sometimes miserably. 